Welcome to Bed Crime Stories Podcast. I'm your host, T. And if true crime is your jam, and like me, you enjoy delving into unsolved cases, trying to figure out who done it, please consider subscribing. Also, if you enjoy my videos, please hit that like button. Don Wells is nearing the end of his jail sentence for violating the terms of his probation. The question on everyone's mind is, what's next for Don? Will he be sent directly to Utah to face his stepsisters and the other women's allegations, or will he be allowed to return to 110 Ben Hill Road? From what I've heard, it sounds like Don will have to face some consequences for the S.A. of his stepsister Jeannie and possibly also for the other women who have come forward with similar claims. Don Wells, despite his extensive criminal background and lawbreaker credentials, admitted on a recorded call that he essayed his stepsister when she was five years old and he was 12. Although he admitted to it, Don tried to put part of the blame for it on his victim, saying she was a willing participant and even the aggressor. Perhaps he thought he could not be held accountable for those actions because of a statute of limitation and because of his age at the time. He was, after all, also a minor. Could those two reasons explain why he freely admitted some culpability for what he did to Jeannie on the recorded phone calls? For a serial criminal who wants to stay out of prison, that's not a savvy move, right? You'd think he'd have known to keep his mouth shut. But then Don does like to talk to YouTubers, and he thinks he's smarter maybe than he is. Because Don admitted guilt in Jeannie's case, it would appear that there's no need for a jury to decide if he really did that or not. So what will happen to Don once his current jail sentence is up? Will he be allowed to head home and start drywalling again? Or will he be bussed in shackle over to Utah to pay the piper? A lot of people have said that Utah can't do anything to Don because of the statute of limitations, meaning the absolute deadline on how long plaintiffs have to file claims and on how long prosecutors have to file charges in criminal cases. According to what I read, the statute varies in length based on the jurisdiction and the nature of the underlying claim or charge but it is typically restricted to a few years at most. This has obviously been a problem for victims who were essayed many years ago but hesitated to come forward at the time. A lot of victims keep their essay a secret. They're afraid to tell anyone, afraid of being judged, perhaps afraid of others not believing them, just plain overall afraid. It's hard to stir up trouble like that. But Utah did something to combat that problem in March of 2015. That's when the Utah legislature passed something called HB 277. HB 277 removed the deadline for civil lawsuits involving child SA, but that is for civil cases, not for criminal cases. So what is the law in Utah for criminal cases? Apparently Utah has no statute of limitations for most SA crimes. Utah Code 76-1-30122 allows prosecution at any time for 19 crimes. One of them is the SA of a child. This means there's no statute of limitation for that. The state of Utah can charge and prosecute this at any time after the crime was committed. At first glance, all of this sounds like a win-win for Jeannie and the others who want to press charges against Don and see him do prison time for his crime. But it's not that simple. From what I understand, the problem prosecutors may have is that the new law only applies to new cases moving forward 
after the law was passed. If the crime goes back farther than that, which is the case with Don Wells and Jeannie, a person may not be able to be charged and prosecuted for that crime. In 2003, the Supreme Court decided in Strongner v. California that a statute of limitations cannot be extended to reopen the possibility of prosecution for a crime that was already outside the statute of limitations. What that means is that if Don Wells is charged with child essay for his actions with his stepsister, a crime that occurred 40-some years ago, well before HB 277 was passed, Don might be able to get the essay crime charges dropped. Might. That doesn't mean he will definitely get off scot-free. Apparently, these types of crime are way more complex than most other types of crime. Whether or not a person like Don Wells can be charged for the crimes and what type of charges he can face depend on a lot of complex details. Things like the age of the victim and the age of the defendant at the time the crime allegedly occurred. What exactly the essay consisted of some acts of essay are considered more egregious than others if there's clear evidence of the essay and more. In short, it's complicated and it will depend on what exactly Don Wells is accused of by each of the women and if there's evidence, things like medical exams done after the essay. So we'll just have to wait and watch and hope for justice to prevail. If Don is ultimately charged and found guilty, the penalties he may face include decades of prison time, thousands of dollars in fines and restitution, and mandatory placement on the SO registry for decades or even a lifetime. Personally, I get the feeling Utah is not going to let Don off the hook if they have what they need to charge him. Because there's more than one victim, those in power may just throw the book at Donnie. Certainly from the way he talks about his essay of Jeannie, he doesn't sound truly recalcitrant and doesn't seem to grasp the full weight of the pain and suffering he inflicted on her and the other alleged victims. If he was really taking responsibility for his actions, he wouldn't be saying things like Jeannie was a willing participant. She was five years old for crying out loud. I'm also thinking that Utah may be able to use what they know about Don's alleged crimes to get him to spill the beans on what he may or may not know about Summer's disappearance. That's been my hope these past few months, that law enforcement, can muscle Don Wells into singing like a bird so that Summer may be found and given the decent treatment that she deserves as a human being, even if that's just giving her a proper burial. I'm sad even saying that. I've always wanted to see Summer turn up alive and well, but I know that the statistics are not on her side at this point. Until the next time on Bed Crime Stories. Now do me a favor, smash that like button. Subscribe if you're not yet subscribed. Leave me a comment. And if you want to support my channel, you can do so right down there in the comments.